Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our Purchasing Oversight Committee meeting. It is February 17th and the meeting time is 10.06. We will begin the meeting with roll call. I am the chair of the Purchasing Oversight Committee, Terenia Carthen, present. Shelly Robinson, Vice Chair of the Procurement Oversight Committee, present. Frederick Perry, Deputy County Administrator, present. Tiffany Stills, Assistant County Administrator, present. And I think we have all of our voting members present. So now we will go into our um, guests who are here with us this morning. If you could give your name. James Worthington, <laughs> Managing Director, Development and Planning. Latanya Ammons, Director of Procurement. Ron oh. Roberts, Planning and Zoning Manager. Uh, Allison Duncan, Senior Planner. Ralph Miller, Finance. Christy Walker, Legislative Aid for District 3. Wendy Caudill, Legislative Aid, District 2. Thank you everyone so much again for joining. We will go on to our approval of the minutes for the last meeting, which was held November 9th, 2021. I hope everyone has had a chance to look over those meeting minutes. Are there any updates, deletions, or corrections to the meeting minutes? No, ma'am. If not, if I can just get a consensus that the meeting minutes can stand approved as presented. So we yeah. Meeting minutes stand approved. We will go into our old business update, just a P-card update, procedure manual, and plan. And that is being handled by Rosalind Miller. Ms. Miller, I give you the floor. And if I can have everybody please mute your, your um, self so that we can hear the speakers clearly. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would love to, I love to see my name in lights, but I cannot um, take this because um, Director Ammons and Justine, they have been, um, I would say a big part of it. So if I could allow them to speak, Right. Absolutely. You have the floor. So Ms. Ammons or Ms. Hayward, if you can give us an update on the old business of the P-card and procedure manual. Okay. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I will um, just give part of the update um, and then Justine can uh, fill in the rest. So right now I am finalizing the P-card um, policies and procedures uh, my goal is for the policy and procedures of the P-card to also line up with the procurement, current procurement policies in the department. Um, for example, P-card charges, purchasing charges up to $1,000 um, just require, they don't require necessarily three quotes. And so uh, for the P-card, I will line that up where individuals be able to charge without having to get you know, three quotes in advance to able, and that will um, allow people to um, kind of just quickly do business on behalf of the county. Um, and then those card charges will be reconciled in the work system, the managers will approve, and then finance will pay. So we cut out a lot of the I guess, human capital associated with requisitions and requisition approvals and, you know, POs and POs being sent out and it um, kind of lifts, um, some of the burden as well on the procurement um, department for those smaller purchases. So that's what I mean by lining PCAR policy up with purchasing policy. And so we will have that, um, I will have it completed soon. And our goal is to um, have training completed um, in March. And I think we said PCARs will go live um, end of March, 1st of April. Thank you. Is there anything else to add, Ms. Hayward? Hi, good afternoon, Commissioner Carthen and Vice Chair and everyone here. <laughs> um, just for a quick update when it comes to the project itself, I'm happy to report that we have um, accomplished significant progress in completing the PCAR implementation for the county. Um, our design phase is essentially complete. The design phase um, encompass majoritatively just integrating our general ledger accounts with our users and having all that information integrated into works. 
um, works really quickly is the application governed by Bank of America, where individuals will swipe their P cards, those transactions will show real time in works, and they will need to take the general ledger account that's associated with the purchase and tie it to that transaction and upload the relative receipt. Um, we have successfully integrated 1,427 GL accounts, of which 803 will be utilized upon um, implementation of the program. Those 803 accounts consist of your non-elected administration individuals that report to your county administrator, such as animal services, parks and rec, things of that sort. We have integrated 41 users into the works application. Um, 27 of those individuals will be card holders. Your department heads, as well as direct reports who serve in a form of leadership that your department heads have designated as people who need cards. The remaining 14 individuals will be um, proxies, such as administrative assistants who can allocate transactions on the department head's behalf, your administrators, such as Ms. Ammons, your accountants, such as Ms. Miller, so on and so forth. Um, that stuff is complete, it was actually done in about three weeks. We're currently in the testing phase of the project. So myself, Ms. Miller, Ms. Ammons, we are testing the environment to make sure everyone is tied to the appropriate department, the appropriate GL accounts, the approval branches are lying the way that they should be. And um, that part has been going pretty successfully. Um, we will soon start the process testing of the project where we will establish six multifaceted dummy cards, if you will, that go from as top to your county administrator down to let's say Jennifer King or Lindy Moore, direct reports of direct reports. Um, we wanna make sure that the full cycle process from swiping the card to allocating, to running a report, having that report exported and imported into new world so that we can pay the bill. We wanna have all of that stuff done successfully before we start training, just as Ms. Ammons mentioned, sometime between, um, we were looking for the end of February, it's probably gonna be that first, second week of March to start training and hopefully get P cards um, delivered out for use by the end of March. And I yield. Thank you so much, Ms. Hayward, that was great. So um, I, do, I am going to applaud y'all on actually taking the project management stance. When I hear, you know, design and then now you're testing for implementation, that shows me that you all are stepping it up in regards to how you are communicating with this board of um, board of commissioners and you're understanding how business needs to align with what we're asking you for. So um, that's great. OK, I'll yield the floor to anyone who has questions for um, Ms. Hayward or Ms. Ammons. Vice Chair Robinson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I obviously, you know, um, I second your comments um, regarding uh, your framework. Well done, well done, um, just well done. So to that point, I just got one thing, Madam Chair, which is, this is to uh, uh, Director Amons and um, Director Miller. The Board of Commissioners as a unique uh, level four, as you, the Deputy Administrator would tell us, has unique um, uh, privilege. We have um, an expense account that I believe is what, $500 per month that we historically, since 1952, use as a mechanism to transact things um, at our discretion on a monthly basis. The Board of Commissioners now have, uh, is, uh, based on the board's will and approval in a public meeting, have their own operating accounts now, to which all transactions now need to be um, directed. Uh, whereby the expense account, that, that typically there's a process that we must put them in, a, in an open meeting. I need that to be reconciled, Director Miller and Director Amons, uh, which is, is, since we have operating accounts, there's no need, um, in other words, we're not putting things in that expense account anymore, unless the board chooses to use it as individuals, but you got an operating account. So I need you to reconcile that process. Uh, we, we need to think about it. Um, Director Miller, bring her up to speed. You don't have to do it now. But uh, Madam Chair, that's just one thing I would like to make sure as they roll this out, that when I hear we're aligning everything, that don't, don't forget that now, we're unique. Unlike the other people that you mentioned, 41, 19, et cetera, the five of us have a unique um, privilege and power um, in how we expense. So I'm just gonna leave it at that for any questions. Madam Chair, are you okay with what I just suggested? Absolutely. Um, if Ms. Stanley, Ms. Miller, and um, Ms. Ammons 
um, understands the, the, the request. Um, then as such, we did just um, vote that we would have operating expenses for each of our districts. So that does need to align with what's being implemented so that when those requisitions come through, everything is pulled from the right accounts. It's basically, so there is no mismanagement or any questions regarding that. Is everybody in alignment? Yes, and that's what we've done. We've linked people with General Ledger. So if Wendy logs in, she's only able to use um, district two's general ledgers. So if um, the com commissioner purchased something, it's only going to his account. It's going to be charged to his account. Now, there's a separate line, Madam Chair. Yes. There's a separate line item. For, remember, the board has $50,000 for the sake of the conversation of operating accounts. And we still have that 6000 annually by state law. We don't lose that. I just want to make sure you sync. No, in other words, we can spend up to 56000 if we so choose to. And that becomes our contingency by default. I just need you to think through that. So I hear you. You're tying everything to that, that 50. We don't lose that, 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 that 6000 per year annually because, again, that's local legislation that gave us that. But I'm just stating something. If you've thought about it, we're good. And I think, yeah. Director Stuart Stanley, you understand the assignment. We're just asking to sync it up. I won't belabor this because I know... Um, um, Madam Chair has to get through the rest of the agenda. I just wanted to make that statement. And if you guys understand it, then I yield. I'll let y'all take care of it. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair Robinson. And I think they are all on one accord. And um, we can also do, um, we can do this offline just mm -hmm. to make sure you can get with Vice Chair Robinson, just to make sure that his request is, uh, you know, is handled. All right, we're going to move on to our new business discussion items. The first item is Media Miracles contract for professional services as a continuation of services from 2021 and to include and to include a component to the ARPA funds that are allocated. Um, so Ms. Amons, I'll just give you a quick update on this. Media Miracles contract um, was with um, Douglas County in 2021, actually the latter part of 2021. And their contract, uh, it was not completed. Um, so what we're asking as a professional services is that their contract now continues because we do need them to come back in and help our communications department with um, upgrades and, and um, production work. Um, and then there were ARPA funds that were also allocated for education program. Um, and Commissioner Robinson can speak more towards that. But what we're seeking to do is make sure that we align Media Miracles contract with all the professional services that um, that we're requesting of them as a continuation of their contract from last year. Um, and with that, I'll yield to um, Vice Chair Robinson if he has anything to add with that. Yeah, there, there's, um, uh, there is ARPA funds, roughly about $467,000 that was allocated for um, literacy. Um, in other words, we had a grant program that gave direct, um, um, direct appropriations to citizens for small businesses. $2,500 grants. That's one part. That's about $400,000. Then there's another $400,000 where we gave them a fish. Now we're teaching them how to fish. It's a formal literacy program, um, education program, doing with financials and entrepreneurship. Miracle Media is, is um, was, um, that was part of their contract, which was to oversee that. Um, they were just facilitating it. Um, they um, followed 10% um, of the, um, as federal law allows, 10% can go on to administrative overhead uh, facilitation project management, which they did, but they're also directly facilitating the production of what we're using as um, an online academy. And so that just needs to be aligned as well. So there was two parts, helping with our communications department, and then I had a one-off. It's like duties as assigned, you know, those additional one-off projects and stuff. Those are two separate things to, to Madam Carthus points that needs to be aligned. So they're, they're, already, they're actively already working on mine. They never stopped that. What they stopped was um, the communications part. And so Madam Carlton is asking for you to realign both of them and bring it forward. And so I'll yield, that's it. Thank you, Vice Chair. Ms. Ammons, do you have any questions in regards to this um, agenda item? Um, my first question is, I, um, who has the latest like copy of the agreement? Um, I don't have a copy of it. 
So do we know who has it? Meaning, Director Ammons, uh, yeah. I have a copy of that contract. Um, okay. Commissioner Carthen gave me a copy of it. Okay. And I can get you a copy today. Okay, perfect. Uh -huh. Thank you. That's all my questions for today. So I can review it and um, make sure what's there aligns with the goal that you and Commissioner Robinson have. Also, it should be in the um, it should be in the files because again, this this contract is a continuation, so it's it should already be in um, on your file. I don't know um, our last procurement director. I don't know where she placed it or or if you've had a chance to go through those yet. But you should still have that contract within your files, and this would just be an amendment or update to that contract. But um, I'm pretty sure that Director Perry will will help you with that. Okay, thank you. We will find it. No problem. The next agenda item is Pumpkin Town RFQ. So Gary Dukes is not on here. I will take this one, Ms. Ammons. Pumpkin Town is about seven years old at this point. And we are needing an RFQ to go out. We are actually having an engineer scope, um, everything that's needed. And one of the things that will be needed um, is a bridge for Pumpkin Town. And so what we are requesting is that as soon as the Southeastern engineers, which should be, I believe, the end of this week or the beginning of next week, am I right, Christy, should have a final, um, a final document for us outlined in all. Okay. The end of this week. The end of this week. So what I'm requesting is that this be priority because again, this park, this is a park, it's a passive park, but um, it's vital that we, um, that we get this out, this RFQ out to bid so that this can be wrapped up before uh, fall of next year. So the sooner we can get this out, the, the better the county will be for it because this project has went on for, like I said, seven years and it's a passive park. And we've had things built in the county um, we've had whole buildings built <laughs> and we haven't got this passive park open to the public yet. Um, so again, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, it's the Punkin Town RFQ and as soon as Southeastern Engineers gets us a report, we'll forward it to you and we ask that you expedite this out um, for bids. Any questions, Ms. Ammons? No, no questions at this time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Um, the next is Bill Arp. Park and Fair Play Park RFQ. So we, again, we don't have Director Dukes on, uh, but he did bring this up. And this was um, brought up during um, the VOC's meeting on Monday with our um, SPLOS team, SPLOS management team. Um, this is another RFQ that's gonna come your way in regards to parks. Just wanted to make sure that we put that on your radar uh, so that you know this is an extension of what's going on. We have a lot in the back law. We have a lot that's backlogged, Ms. Ammons. So I'm just going to be real honest with you. But I just wanted to bring these to your attention so that we can get started on them and so that you can get your team and make your team aware and that they can start pulling whatever is needed so that we can get these requests um, for qualifications and proposals out as well. Am I missing anything on that, Director Stanley? Or... Um, or Director Perry? No. And I see we have one here, Commissioner Mitchell from Parks and Rec's department. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, is there anything you wanna say in regards to that? And thank you so much for joining us. No, 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 I, I, I just popped in and I apologize, but, but no, I don't have anything to add to that. Okay, because I know that's your, that's your your committee, but I just wanted to bring it forward because I just wanted to make sure Ms. Ammons knew that we, we needed to push these things forward ASAP. Thank you. Our next agenda item is on-demand RFQs, um, on-demand um, RFQs for uh, the um, for each of our departments. And basically, this would kind of be Ms. Ammons in regards to the DOT. I know... Um, our DOT director, um, Miguel Valentin, pulls from a list of um, on-demand contracts that he um, was able to receive because we put out an RFQ about two years ago. And so I think what 
Commissioner Robinson and a lot of us are really wanting is to make sure that we have the same type of quick access to people who've been qualified in areas that we're needing them in, such as project management, um, such as um, HR management, um, certain things that we're needing. And so I just wanted to get your take on getting us uh, on-demand RFQ um, out. And um, Commissioner Robinson, if you have anything in regards to that, just to kind of let Ms. Ammons know what we're looking at since you've already done it in Transportation Committee. Yes, ma'am. May I? May I? Absolutely, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, just to clarify this, and. Um, I guess it was yesterday or two days ago, the Board of Commissioners um, obviously authorized you to put out an RFQ for this. So let's give clarity to the expectation. Um, uh, we're talking about project management, just talk about in general terms. We're looking for skill sets that are, we're looking for people, that is either a person or a firm. Now, obviously, it's based on qualifications for federal, state, and local projects. Right, so there's going to be different layers. So as you put out this RFQ and you solicit people to weigh in, you're going to you know, slice them up. You're going to screen them and slice them up based on they'll put them in the right bucket. Okay, this group can be federal. This group has qualifications for state. This group qualify for local. Um, and so we're looking for that, that type of strength initiative. Then there's the industry. So there's horizontal, then there's industry, HR, um, transportation, et cetera. So there, um, there, there's both horizontal, um, as well as um, vertical understanding of how to deliver projects. Um, like we have some internal projects, obviously we have team members as you see earlier that were beginning to do that, but we're looking for formal discipline, formal methodology, right? We're looking for people who are certified, right? That you can pass the muster, um, not aspirational. You have experience, all right? And so that's what we're looking for. So it's program slash project management. That's a loose term, right? Depends on where you come out of, but there's program slash project management. That's what we're looking for here. And we're looking for um, basically to her point on demand. Um, basically, once you screen them now at any given time based on their qualifications, whether they're either C class, E class, S class, whatever the case may be, federal, state, or local, you have a short list and it's just task order oriented. And it's, um, it's to speed up our capacity to be able to respond. We are, my last statement is that we're behind on this. We're highly exposed. We've got a lot of projects out here that we haven't even scoped out yet. We've already taken down money out of the art, but nobody's scoped it out yet. There's no accounting for it. There's no statement of work. There's no keeping up with it. So anyway, I think you get the point. I'll leave it at that. So uh, um, any questions, Director Ammons, on sort of the general understanding? No, no questions at this time. All right. Madam Chair, are you? Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Stewart Stanley or Director Perry, do you all have anything to add to that? Because I know that that was something that you all have been trying to work with us on as well, because now that you're at the helm, you see how a lot of projects have kind of the balls have been dropped on them because nobody's owning them and nobody's putting them through the development life cycle. So is there anything you'd like to add? Um, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Carthen. Yes, no, I definitely agree with the assessment of um, yourself and um, Vice Chairman of the Committee. Um, after, uh, you know, just making an assessment, this is definitely something that we definitely need to look at as a county. Um, and we will definitely work diligently with Ms. Ammons to make sure that we, we get this right. Thank you. Yep, good old that. Um, I've been in contact with uh, Director Ammons on a daily basis, so. We're on top of that, uh, Vice Chair and uh, Chairman. Chairman, we are uh, uh, just been talking about it, and uh, we're going to move forward with it. So uh, we got a good one in uh, Director Ammons. So uh, I'll be leaning on her expertise to uh, to move this RF, uh, RFQ forward. Madam Chair, thank you so much, Vice Chair Robinson. You have yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just real quick, and, and Director Ammons, I think you were there, but just just for the record. Um, our, um, we had a project, uh, our transportation center, and um, we um, do a self-reporting. We had our, our, our formal auditor go in there and do an audit of that project. There were some observations that came out of that that I would highly encourage um, the committee members who haven't seen it, um, especially my commissioner peers, if you haven't read it, to look at those eight observations. And a lot of them, it, 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 it affirms it speaks to the glaring exposure we have regarding program management, oversight, et cetera. The director, anyways, I highly encourage you to read that 
and, um, and understand because it speaks to the heart exactly what we're talking about. Like, look, this is why we're doing what we do. And so, you know, apply that across all the projects. And so we need a little bit more direct oversight. Our, our organization, our staff, Director Perry, um, um, uh, ACA, they're good at operations management. They know how to deliver services to the people. But these one-offs, we don't, we don't do program management. That's not our skill set. We bring in those experts time to time. These are contracts, Debbie, right? These are contracts that come in, they fulfill their assignment, and they go away. But we need that, and we need expertise to be able to do that. So please read that. Um, all that are listening, you don't need to read that thing. Um, and it speaks highly to it. Madam Chair, thank you so much. I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Robinson. Um, and so we will move on to the next agenda item, which is contract management software needs. Now, Ms. Ammons, we have put before you a lot. Well, the one thing that you will need in order to keep all of this <laughs> and, and continuity and, and at your fingertips is a management software. So um, I know that you spoke about uh, having an, um, a tool, maybe possibly, um, utilizing the, the program we're using now, but I uh, just wanted to, to really highlight that we understand that you do need contract management software to align our needs, to align the RFQs, to align payment, to align um, when these contracts uh, need to be amended, to align when these contracts begin and end, and to align how many times a certain contractor has received a contract with Douglas County, whether or not they're a minority contract owner, all of these things, whether or not they're local. So, um, but this can only be handled if you've got the, the management, um, the contract management software. So just wanted to highlight that for you and speak about that. Is there anything we can help you with in regards to obtaining that? Yeah, um, so I spoke with um, New World and uh, attempted some training the other week, but it was, um, so we do have a contract management tool for New World. It is live. And um, to be honest, I haven't even had a chance to put a contract in there. And so my goal is now every new contract that is signed now going forward to actually put into the, um, the tool. And I don't know how robust the tool is. I just haven't had an opportunity to use it um, just yet. So I am hoping that it gives me all of the information that I need. Mm -hmm. And if not, I'll be able to fill in kind of those blanks um, you know, on the side. But again, I, I don't have a signed contract yet. Um, we'll probably have one by the end of this week or next week just to put it in, see how the system works. Yes, tie it to um, the purchasing module. And also then it will be the financial module, you know, as well. All of that information will be able to be pulled down. That is the happy path right? Once you input the contract and you select a division or a department, and then those codes come in, and then it may have, you know, automatic renewal um, notifications. I'm, I'm hoping that that is the case. So in other words, I'm hoping that this tool will give, give us an oversight of all contracts that are outstanding at any given time, um, almost in line with what uh, Commissioner um, Vice Chair Robinson would like on the grant side. I'm hoping this tool gives me this on the contract side. And so we would know too where we stand um, as an organization. But again, just haven't had the opportunity um, in two weeks to use it yet, nor um, have I had an opportunity for robust training. Um, but it is live and I will start tinkering around um, by the end of next week. Thank you so much, Mr. Ammons. I'm actually encouraged that you at least took that initiative to see, uh-oh, they, <laughs> they don't have anything that they can actually track all these things with. And so the fact that you um, have already um, allowed it to go live and that you're starting the training. Um, so this is the testing mode for you. This, this is where you get to test it and kick the wheels of it to see what actually works for us, what we need. Um, and if this module doesn't work, maybe um, New World can add something, or we may need to start looking at another contract management software system. But um, I'm encouraged to know that you have at least started this. So kudos to you and thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Robinson, you have anything to add? No, this no, no ma'am. No. One point, right. better keep going. Moving right along. Um, the next agenda item is short-term rental tracking software, planning and zoning department. And Manager Roberts, I'll let you or- I'll tee it off, sure. Okay, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, you know, the discussions we had last year um, uh, on the short-term rentals and issues and things like that, we, we desired to find a, uh, a software uh, 
cloud-based that would that could uh, actually identify all the software. I mean, could identify all the short-term rentals throughout the county. I think this is part of the uh, the little presentation that Allison already has, so she could pull that up. But we identified a couple of companies that we wanted to kind of pursue. Um, felt like the the amounts that we had asked for from the in, during the budget process are actually in our budget to do this. So um, we just wanted to bring it forward and see what the process is. Um, there was one um, uh, one particular company that already had statewide uh, uh, certification. So we just wanted some clarity around that and wanted to be able to move it forward. Dallas, did you want to pull pull that up? Or had the I'm sure. Do you need to see the slide deck or um, do, do, would it be more efficient use of the time in the committee to just kind of get to the specific ask that we had today? Yeah. OK, let's just do that. So the specific ask we had was when we looked at the, 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 the amounts, that's what we had asked for in our budget during the budget hearing process. And um, we like I said, we've got two companies that are very, very close and we would like to um, to be able to to work through the, the procurement process to secure to secure their services, what right. they do is what they they do is fully identify the short term rentals no matter what platform. And we talked about how many different platforms short term rentals actually exist on now: VRBO, Airbnb, Craigslist. I mean, just a whole bunch of different things that are out there. And so um, this company identifies across and finds them across all those platforms so that we can actually get uh, revenues and things from them. Um, and, and see, apparently, I mean, would actually pay for itself um, just in terms of business licensing and things that we'd be able to capture. I think when we went through the demonstration, they pulled up about 180 some uh, short-term rentals that, that, that appeared in our, in, throughout Douglas County. And so if we're able to utilize this software, we can identify them and, and, and work with the business licensing to capture revenue from that. And uh, also their the ancillary benefit is, is actually having um, a list of them so that we know uh, and can provide the sheriff's department should there be uh, instances of uh, disturbances or weekend parties and things like that that I think some of the commissioners have had in their districts. Yeah, and so just to follow on that, can y'all see my screen that I just, popped up a slide because yeah. what I wanted to to clarify is that you know under our procurement policy we currently understand that purchases between fifteen hundred and twenty five thousand dollars require three written quotes we were actually only able to identify two companies that provide this software it's kind of a niche um, company there was a third company but I'm be honest with you they just they focus mainly on rentals and vertical products so like you know, high rise condominium buildings that have illegal rentals and honestly that's just not what we're dealing with here in Douglas County. So, so what we mostly wanted to do in the sake of full transparency is to let you know that one of the companies has been authorized to the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance Agreement. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I have any idea what that actually means, but I think it's a, I think it's something like state contract, right? I think it's something like they've gone through a process where they've already been vetted, so you can just sort of move forward with that. So I think we recognize that this doesn't typically exceed the, the cost threshold for which it would you know, come to y'all for purchasing oversight, but, but we wanted to be fully transparent that we just couldn't identify a third company that we felt met our needs so that we could meet the letter of the law in regard to the three written quotes. So we're, we're suggesting that we move forward with the company that has been authorized to the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance Agreement um, at the time that we asked to be on the committee, I don't believe that Ms. Ammons had joined us at that time. And so I think that, that I don't want to put her on the spot, but I think since that time, she's indicated that she's maybe familiar with what this cooperative purchasing alliance agreement means and that this is a, a, a typical way that would be appropriate to do business with the county. Um, but to just echo what Manager Roberts has shared, I think that's basically our ask here today is to just make sure that we're okay moving in this direction. Or if you would like for us to you know, submit quotes between the two companies we've identified and solicit for anybody else who would like to bid. We're cool with going that route also. We just want to be very transparent and do whatever y'all believe is in the best interest of Douglas County. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Duncan. Uh, Ms. Ammons, I'll yield to your expertise on this um, for the National Cooperative Purchase and Alliance Agreement. I believe the ask is that is, is if the county can move forward with them. And if so, then we'll get a motion to do so. 
Yeah, yes, we can um, move forward. So the purpose of the like cooperative agreements is um, organizations and including the state um, kind of um, pull together for lack of better words, like the buying power on behalf of their members. And so, yes, they have vetted, they put out an RFP, they vetted, and basically everyone can purchase from these agreements. And we are a member of several cooperative agreements. And so that helps take the legwork. Um, I call it the happy path away from us because there are some areas that we just aren't experts in and other people are, and they've done the legwork. And so because we are members, it is allowed, we purchase off of that agreement. It does negate the need for other quotes, um, as long as the services, again, what we need um, or the goods that we need to purchase. And so I definitely recommend moving forward with the um, cooperative agreement. And, um, you know, it just it makes it easier and it's, it's a happy path. Thank you so much. So Ms. Duncan or Manager Roberts, if you could give us the name of the company so that we can make a motion formally. Uh, the name of the company is Granicus. Um, it's, it's also known as Host Compliance, but I think that Granicus is the company um, that is the that we would actually be contracting with and their service is Host Compliance. Granicus, thank you. So I'll entertain a motion um, for Granicus to become um, the contract um, the contract for short-term rentals that Douglas County will be utilizing. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have a motion and a second. Um, when I call your name, if you will, yay or nay. Um, Tarina Carthen, yes. Commissioner Robinson? I vote yes. Director Stuart Stanley? Yes. Director Fred Perry? Yes. And Director Amons? Yes. So we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, Manager Roberts and uh, Ms. Duncan. Um, the next agenda item is also you all's contract Great. for consulting services for comprehensive plan update planning and zoning. You have the uh, floor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner Carthen. We actually went to through the, the budget process last year to secure $150,000 to update our comp plan. Previous to the previous two, it's not done every five years. It has to be done every five years. The next due date for this is going to be 2023 in October. We'd like to start the process in this year um, to, uh, to, to get someone on board and start working through the the, the the full comp plan update. Uh, there's a slideshow that we have available as well. It shows kind of like some timelines that planning and zoning staff has kind of worked out. Um, first being to bring this forward. It, it was, uh, it was it went through the budget process. Um, the money was, was to be spent over 20, fiscal year 2022 and 2023 for $150,000 to, to to uh, contract with a firm that would help us build a, a, a very robust comp plan and full comp plan update for um, before the deadline of the October 2023. And if we if you have a if we if we have some time, we do have the the timeline that we can kind of go through. And part of the reason is the last two iterations of comp plan or have been done by ARC staff, and it is recommended by the Atlanta Regional Commission that you. Um, either you do, you don't continue to do that every five years that you actually, you know, do a deeper dive on the character areas and uh, the, the, the entire county as a whole and, and, and get a, a kind of a more robust product than what we, you normally would get from the free kind of free ARC update to the comp plan. So just to manager um, Robert, so if you have the slide, we, we can look at that now. And while that slide is being pulled up um, so that we and the uh, the audience can, can understand what we're doing, I just want to make sure that Director Perry or Director Stanley, that the previous item we voted on will be on the agenda for the full Board of Commissioners to vote upon for Madam Chair. Uh, yes, will do. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much. Manager Roberts or Ms. Duncan, you have the floor. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to talk a little bit about the comprehensive plan update. As Manager Roberts says, this is 
a requirement by the state to maintain your qualified local government status with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Um, as you know, that, that QLG status is an important thing. It comes up every now and again, you know, when we go to apply for GFA loans and things of that nature. Um, when we go to apply for certain transportation planning grants and things like that, we wanna make sure that we're in good standing with the state. Um, it is required every five years. And as Ron had said, we've used the free technical planning services of the Atlanta Regional Commission for the last two years. And they have recommended that if, if you've used their services for two consecutive update cycles, it is time to, to kind of do a more full and robust update. So $150,000 has been allocated for this contract. 75,000 is allocated for 2022 and 75,000 will be allocated out of 2023. There we go, that's good. Um, sharing this, uh, can you see the map on the screen now? Yes. Um, because what I think is important to underscore to y'all is that we're calling this our 2018 character area map. The reality is this is the legacy of the 2004 future land use maps. So let me just say that again, it's really been since 2004 since we've done a good kind of robust look at our land use. And so that's why we're really proposing that a big piece of this is that we do a deep dive into our into our character areas. We continue to use this map, which is properly a future land use map, but we do more with our character areas. Um, we integrate our trail concepts, so not just the ones that are funded, but we know we have some trail concepts that we could use to connect our character areas and that we incorporate um, the most recent comprehensive transportation plan update into an overall land use vision. And then in addition to that, I think Douglas County's done some really fantastic planning work with their five-year strategic plan. Uh, we have our economic development strategy, the CTP, um, and then the South Douglas Scenic Byway and other kind of small area plans we've done for places like Lithia Springs. So we wanna make sure that we demonstrate to the community that their voices have been heard, right? I don't envision that we'd go out and say, hey, tell us what you want. I think we know what they want. I think it's just, we're a bit overdue for a document that shows the community that we've heard them. Um, so that's a big piece of what we're really proposing. Um, and as Manager Roberts indicated, um, this is our kind of anticipated scope and schedule. And assuming that we get the green light from y'all to move forward, we would work with uh, Ms. Ammons to, to put together that RFP that we would uh, look towards sort of a mid-March let date. Um, and then you can kind of see going forward, we hope to have uh, somebody under contract by May, we would recognize that we would need to bring back that recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, um, assume we would work through what I understand to be the most current procurement process where we would put together an internal evaluation team after soliciting for at least three um, firms to, to bid on this work, and then really get started in earnest uh, in July with our existing conditions background work um, with a big public push for outward engagement through the fall of this year so that we can come back again in the spring and continue to revisit this. We also want to be cognizant that we don't push past our October deadline. As I know, um, it has been articulated from the Board of Commissioners that, that seeking status as a plan first community is important. Um, so making sure that we meet that October 2023 deadline is important when we resubmit our plan first um, application. And then we've honestly built in a couple of three months, you know, of time just in case we have to deal with, hopefully we don't have to deal with, but in case we have to deal with another virus surge or anything else that would tie us up a little bit. So, so that's why we're here in front of you today, so that hopefully we can do what we need to do to move forward to release that RFP um, about a month hence, and then work through the, the prescribed process on the books to bring it back to you for approval of a consultant to move forward on this project. Thank you so much. So your request is to um, start an RFP with Ms. Amon so that we can get this um, engagement started. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Ammons, do you have any questions or anything? No, not at this time. We spoke yesterday in detail. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'm going to entertain a motion that uh, the RFP pro RFQ process for the um, comprehensive planning update gets started now. I know Ms. Amos, you, you, you gonna have a lot with us in, in RFQs, huh? But <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I, I, I know, but, but these, are, these are all needed. And the thing that I do so applaud Manager Roberts and, and Ms. Duncan with is, is they're like 18 months ahead of schedule. So we, mm -hmm. We know that they, <laughs> that they 
Yeah, but they, they are the planning department, and so yeah, I appreciate them. Um, and um, it's, it's all good. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll get through it. Okay. So um, since it's an RFQ, though, I don't think we really need a motion for this. I just wanted to to bring it before everyone and, and just make sure that all hearts and minds are clear. Commissioner Robinson, do you have any questions regarding this? No, as a, a, um, a point of order, just administrative concurrence is, is okay. typically the rule that we use in transportation, but that's, that's your discretion. Well, I, I, will, I will take it from you, administrative concurrence. Do I have administrative concurrence for this process to begin for the comprehensive planning update? <laughs> All right, go out. Yeah, I see a thumbs up. I see a head nod. Okay, so it looks yes, like it's Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Manager Roberts and uh, Ms. Duncan for coming in this morning. Do you have anything else to present before us before I move on? No, ma'am. We really appreciate your time. And it was delightful to, to, to meet uh, Ms. Ammons uh, and talk to her yesterday in preparation for this meeting. We look forward to getting these projects started in earnest. Wonderful. Y'all are no longer newbies. Welcome to the procurement. <laughs> I know. James is first, too. All yes. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, our next agenda item that I wanted to speak briefly about was adding language to cover contracts over five years. Uh, we, as a, um, uh, a committee, before I left the committee, um, were looking at um, contracts um, up to five years, making sure that any contract over five years was, was bidded out so that we just wouldn't have a couple of companies, companies that had monopoly on contracts with the uh, with the county. Um, so Ms. Amons, my um, request to you is to look at the language that covers that and to make sure that it aligns with what you know um, in regards to procurement processes and for the government, just to make sure that we're dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. We wanna make sure that we, um, we're we doing this correctly. And that was for, um, for, not for professional services, but if professional services was included in that, I'm pretty sure you would let us know. So if you would just look at that language and look at what uh, what is on the books so that we can align everything properly. Um, okay, and that really is also in line with a conversation that I've had with um, Attorney Coleman in developing standardized contracts that we will yes. use going forward. And yes. in that contract um, language, um, you know, of course, we can adjust if it's a one year agreement with options to renew there you um, go. and or a set five year agreement. It just depends on what the service or good is. But yes, we will address that in the language. And my goal is um, and one of the goals is just with the contract management system. It's like you said, we will know where we are in a contract and thus we'll be able to say, you know, it's been five years, whether we need to bid it out and or look for another um, vendor if they are not, um, you know, adhering to the terms and the conditions of the contract. So um, yes, we will make sure that um, what I'm hearing is contracts will no longer be um, longer than five years unless bid it out, but we will address that in standardized contract language moving forward. Thank you so much. I'm glad you did have a, a, a talk with a attorney Coleman. That was one of my, my pain points um, coming on board here about four years ago that, that those things weren't aligned. So I'm so glad that you're on board and, um, and yes, that we- It's that hard to negotiate yes. with someone else's paper. Um, exactly. And so we're, we're having that um, discussion right now with the architect for fire station number nine. And wow. so my okay. professional experience when we, and my goal is to include a draft of the contract with every RFP that goes out. And so um, there are no surprises, there are no hangups after a vendor has been selected. And so I, I believe that in my experience, a lot of times that is why we have a notice of intent to award for a vendor so we can kind of get through this process versus a notice of award where we almost feel like our hands are tied. So if we intend to award it and then we continue to, um, at that point, negotiate contracts, negotiate, you know, and iron it out, then we have a final um, award and we can move forward. But right now we kind of award it, I mean, you know, for the architect and now we're stuck, not stuck, which is going back and having, you know, discussions on some of the terms and conditions and trying to understand the spirit of their document versus what we are comfortable with. And so um, that is why my goal is standardize our paper and everyone knows what's going on up front. Thank you so much. 
I appreciate that. Um, Commissioner Robinson, Vice Chair Robinson. Yes, ma'am. You have the floor. Yeah, thank you. I'll be brief. Um, yes, um, Director Amos, it's about um, maturation. And we appreciate you. Um, again, why we're here is, is really sort of water on the bridge, as Commissioner Mitchell would say. It's what are we going to do about it? And it's moving us forward. So I appreciate your, your understanding. Please, there's no holy grail, no sacred cows here. Uh, move it forward. Put something on the table to move us. Secondly, to that point, I just want to bring up one point. For example, the SPLOST. Uh, SPLOST is a six-year program. Six years. You might get a contract. On your, the Atlas it used to be Moreland Russell, but now it's Atlas Russell. That's a six-year contract. So what does that mean from a program perspective? So I, I recognize it's always a one-off. It's always the will of the board. So you've got your standard five-year threshold, but the board, I'm just, I'm just bringing up a point because it's, it's top of my mind is how we handle something like that. It's always the will of the board. We always know that we can override policy. It's our choice. You get three people, it'll move, but just that's one that like, look, that's, look what we put in play. But you know, you got this contract out here that's solidly six years. So it's just something to think about. Um, and I just want to put that out there, Madam Chair, um, this was something to consider. It may not be anything. Um, and I know between uh, Director Amons and the county attorney, they'll work through those situations. Most things won't be that long, right? I mean, that long, or a T-spa, spa, those are long programs. Everything else, the annualized process. But, you know, we need to make sure we have um, consideration for those as well. I yield, thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chair Robinson. And that's a great point. Um, and that's why um, making sure that um, adding language to cover that and uh, making sure that those contracts align is important. That's why it's on the agenda. Um, any further questions? Any comments? No? All righty. Well, if there is no further business to come before um, the Purchasing Oversight Committee. No. Okay, well, this meeting stands adjourned at 1058. Thank you all so much. Look forward to uh, seeing you all at the next meeting. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Bye-bye.